In this week's brand new episode of Hill Climb Monsters in Project Cars 2, we're travelling back to Rallying's greatest era as the fearsome Group B Audi S1 Quattro takes on our Zero Coast Hill Climb course. But has this 450 brake horsepower turbocharged rallying legend still got it? Let's go find out. What's going on guys, my name is Bettinio and welcome back to Project Cars 2 and a brand new episode of Hill Climb Monsters. And this week's challenger, as you've already seen, is this, the Audi Sports Quattro S1, or the Audi S1 Quattro as I call it. And the reason I went for this car this week is purely down to the fact that we haven't done one of the Group B cars in a while. The last one we did was the Renault Maxi Turbo, not long after it came out. And though it's enjoyable, it's not sort of in the same sort of league as the, uh, uh, you know, in real life anyway, it wasn't in the same sort of league as the Audis, the Peugeots and the Lancia and so on so um, I've been wanting to do this for a while it is my favorite group B car so we're finally getting around to it for this week so yeah let's uh, kick the episode off as we always do by taking a look at some of the stats so uh, produced in 1986 it obviously falls into the group B category it's four-wheel drive it's got a six-speed h button gearbox bolted to a glorious straight five turbocharged engine producing 450 brake horsepower 0 to 60 comes up with just a, a shade over uh, three seconds uh, top speed is 148 miles an hour providing you You've got the gearing absolutely spot on. You've got a stretch road long enough. Uh, the weight is 2,400 pounds. It doesn't feature any uh, any stability aids, so no traction stability or ABS or anything like that. Um, control difficulty is two, and cornering speed is one. So yeah, um, like I said, the the Audi Quattro um, was my it's my favourite Group B rally car. Uh, I was you know I wasn't old enough to actually watch Group B uh, when it was happening, but I've watched loads of documentaries and. The reason it's my favourite is because the noise. The noise is incredible on this thing. It really is. It's absolutely awesome. And I think the same engine found its way into the uh, the Audi IMSA car that went over there. And everybody was laughing at it. And it just went there and mudded everybody. Just absolutely caned them all. Um, so, yeah. Um, like I said, it's my favourite Group B rally car. And it's just... I mean, I've driven this... Uh, I've driven this in, in this game, but I've also driven it in um, in Dirt Rally 2.0. And actually, there's a car in the top right hand corner now. You can check me out um, taking this thing around the uh, one of the one of the stages in Sweden, which is you know just snow basically. And it's a really tricky car to drive in that. But uh, on tarmac, it did present its own problems. Um, so with that, we're going to move on to sort of the practice and the setup. And like I said, there were a few problems with the setup. Um, the first one was the gearing and surprisingly you get more top speed out of this thing by going short on the gearing than you do going long when i put it when i had the gearing long the, the final drive long the first five gears were fine but the sixth gear would just sort of stop and it wouldn't go beyond 130 mile an hour um, so i had to go short on the gearing and i managed to extract a bit more speed out of it and the straights uh, the major straight being of course the happy highway that's where we got to get the highest top speeds out of there um, so yeah i mean the other issues that i had um now i did try and stiffen it up a little bit obviously it's a rally car so it's going to sit quite high the suspension is going to be rather soft to sort of deal with the, the rugged terrain that it's normally used to but considering we don't really have much of that or any of that on this particular course I did try and stiffen it up but i think it went a little bit too far because um I was getting points where the front wheels were lifting completely off the ground. And I'm not talking a little bit. I'm talking a lot. Like, at least a foot off the ground. Maybe more. Um, so, yeah. And it would normally happen coming through corners. So, um, as you would imagine, with the front wheels coming off the ground, you lose all steering altogether. And the only thing that's going to stop you, for the most part, is a wall. Um, so, yeah, that was tricky. And, and it's sort of the polar opposite. Because, like I said, I've driven this car. And I did intend to do this car in this series a while back. But I had this problem where coming through certain like crests and bumps it's like the front suspension collapsed basically so the nose would just pitch downwards and it would stay there the arse would be up presenting itself to the world and i think it was a bug because they seem to have fixed it now i've not had any problems with this particular run so um yeah so that was a tricky one um so i did try and stiffen it up a little bit but i want i think i couldn't go too far with it because like i said i've had the problems where the i think you can go stiffer on the front than you can at the back which is where the problems were coming so the so it will just sort of pitch itself upwards, if that makes sense. Um, and the other ones, I mean, honestly, there wasn't a whole lot else to do, if I'm being honest with you. Um, I did some work when I did the first one, when I tried to do it a while ago in, in an episode of this series. And I can't quite remember what I did. I already had like a, a setup in there and I just kind of worked from that. Um, so, yeah, um, as you would imagine, though, with a car that's sort of tricky to drive and can be a little bit troublesome at times. 
there were a few accidents. So uh, this first one is just coming out of ice cream cones. You can see we've sort of bashed the front up a little bit already. And uh, just got a little bit too uh, hairy on the gas. I tried to catch that weight transfer and maybe just swing it around. But yeah, hit the barrier and that was the end of that. And this next one is pretty much the same story coming down to cause uh, cruise liner corner. Uh, again, the, the rear end just gets a little bit out of shape. I thought I'd just about caught it and then no, it just spun me around and I'm pointing in the wrong direction there. So uh, there we go. Um, so yeah, um, now in terms of the leaderboards, um, the fastest time in this particular category is 701.952 and I don't think we're going to get close to that as you can see the first page is dominated by rallycross cars but the fastest group B time is on page number 2 and position number 13, the Ford RS200 with a 732.377 so that's definitely a target to aim for um, and the fastest um, Audi S1 Quattro time is on page number three and uh, position number 24 with a 751.819 uh, there so uh, that's another target to aim for. Um, we've also got a time on this board and that's uh, in 20th position there as you can see uh, 747 triple two in that uh, that Renault Maxi Turbo that I mentioned and I mean going to our leaderboards and you can see it's probably the only thing we can really go up against it's in 35th position it's on the fourth page of the leaderboards there's only three cars that have been slower than it and they should hang their hands in shame um so yeah um so that's that's definitely what we're going to be targeting i'm going to be trying to get that fastest group b time uh so that's 732 um but it's going to be tricky it's going to be hard so um yeah, let's uh, well, let's do it. Let's go find out what it can do. So uh, let's head down to the track now and see what the Audi S1 Quattro can put up. Okay then, guys. So here we go. Audi S1 Quattro on our Azure Coast Hill Climb course. And off we go down towards the first corner, booty curve. And um, I did have some troubles early on in the running with this. Uh, purely because there's no adjustability in the, in the front end. You know, there's no no adjustable front wings or anything like that on this car uh, it was a bit of a tricky corner because obviously with it being four-wheel drive you're going to get a little bit of understeer with it uh, as we're about to see uh, here at uh, cruise line accord you can see whoa there we go but probably a little bit more sliding than understeer but we're going to clip that little side of the inside there and then off we go through traffic cone corner uh, sorry, trash can corner, and off we go down the hill towards the magic roundabout. But um, like I was saying, the, the thing that helped with getting the nose a little bit more was just winding off the rear the rear wing a little bit. It was on five, and I went down to two, and that helped immeasurably. But over the magic roundabout, no real drama. Uh, going over it, we had a little bit of a moment coming out of it, though. I had to sort the wheel a little bit just to get this thing back in check. And up we go now towards stickman squats and. Uh, it's corners like this where this thing was in its element purely because it is just you know it's got a very sort of soft setup on the suspension it's got to just take those bumps in its stride and we're not going to have any real major problems with it but onto the happy highway now and as you can see we're already coming up to our sixth gear and like i said i went long on the gearing initially because that's sort of what normal you know normally i would do in a situation like this where i can't reach the top speed or get to the end of the the, the final gear but uh, going short seemed to be the way to go with this so with the with, with going long it was topping out 130 you see we're now up to 138 miles an hour as we come down through uh, traffic cone corner uh, we kept uh, we catch a little uh, a few of those bollards on the uh, the right uh, sorry the left hand side uh, no real drama though and uh, we're going to catch a couple more through this corner here and uh, they go flying bye bye and uh, down towards uh, stonewall corner now and uh, yeah like i said uh, the, the understeer was a little bit of an issue but the like i said winding the rear wing off was a big help in that regard so uh, there we go uh, but on we come now to uh, what would be understeer corner and probably could have taken that a little bit better we've got a little bit of oversteer so i might have to change that corner name a little bit uh, but down the hill into ice cream cove now and again, just this is where a car like this is probably going to be really in its element because it's very, very bumpy. It's got those small, just, you know, repeated bumps, the up and down motion with the suspension. And uh, this really takes it in a stride. Uh, we're just about keeping out of that uh, that traffic sign there. Uh, and off we go down through Cobra Pass now. And again, uh, there were times with this car where you really could sort of um, maybe gain a little bit of time by just managing that weight transfer. Um, you don't feel it all that much and it is sort of tricky to get it absolutely right but uh, there were times where it was pretty good uh, but then we come now to James May Corner named after Captain Slow the slowest corner on the course and off we go again uh, down towards the back end of sector number one and uh, the other big thing with this and, and I've mentioned it for other cars as well with it being turbocharged you do have to sort of train your brain just to keep your foot in it a little bit so the turbo doesn't wind down and you end up with just massive amounts of turbo lag 
Uh, but coming into here, we're going to run a little bit wide. We're just about keeping out of the ball. Ever so close. It would have been millimetres, if nothing else. And through now, um, danger curve and on to outrun. And again, this is another area where it's going to be in its element with those bumps and those crests. So we just about tagged the barrier a little bit there. Uh, the rear end went a little bit light on there coming through. Uh, but up to about 130 miles an hour as we come down through the dip and up towards Fraggle Rock Corner. Get down to fifth gear. And again, like I say, you just feel it bogged down a little bit there. I probably could have come down to fourth and uh, maybe just keep my foot in it a little bit more through that corner. But uh, uh, there we go. Uh, but on we go now down towards Stonewall Corner. As you can see, just having to put so much steering input in just to get this thing round some of the faster corners. We're down to fourth gear through here. And again, I probably could have taken it a little bit faster, a little bit of a wobble on the exit, but no real drama. And off we go up the hill towards the Monga McRae Hill Complex. And into here, going to take a little bit of grass on the inside, just help drag the car through the corner a little bit. And uh, over these bumps and crests. And again, this is where it's going to be really in its element. A lot of cars really struggle with this sort of area where they're getting you know getting off the ground but this is sort of what it's built for pretty much it was you know the dominant one of the dominant cars of its particular area in rallying and uh it was you know i suppose this section would be most akin to sort of place like finland maybe i guess uh, which i'm really looking forward to in uh, another game there on his 2.0 hurry up uh but through this corner and again get on the grass a little bit of oversteer on the exit but again we managed it pretty much as best we can and off we go up down uh, up to uh, the camel straight now over the first hump. A little bit of air there. We're going to get more air over this one though. And down we come. No real drama again. Just absolutely brilliant over the bumps and the jumps. Uh, getting the nose in nice and early there. And again for here. A little bit of grass on the inside just to help tuck the car in. And again a little bit of oversteer on the exit. But off we go uh, down the pogo stick straight now. And again, more jumps and bumps where this thing is going to be absolutely in its element. And over this one, this is the big one here. And this is a sort of a big one as well at times. And get it down to third gear for this one. Again, getting that inside wheel on the grass just to sort of help it down there. Uh, we did sort of bog down a little bit on the exit there with the turbo. But we were pretty much flat through here. Again, getting a little bit on the grass. But a lot of cars with it being a stiff setup, they really do struggle with that sort of area in this one as well. And again, ooh, a little bit of a wobble there. But no real drama is, uh, again. And off we go through the tunnel and down onto the Great Ocean Highway. And um, I mean, at this point, I'll be honest with you. Uh, the run I did prior to this through the middle sector, which ends about here, I was a second quicker. But I was a second quicker in the, uh, in the first sector than my first run. So this final sector is going to be where it's going to be all decided pretty much. Uh, whether we can find any more time. And... Uh, you can see we're sort of labouring a little bit, getting into sixth gear, up to 125, 26 miles an hour. And through this uh, this long, uh, elongated S-bend, through the tunnel and onto the viaduct straight now. And uh, down through here, again, this is sort of, it, it's quite good through here. It's not as good as a lot of cars, obviously, with the, with the sweeping nature of it. It can get a little bit understeering. It, it does have a tendency to slide, as you see there, we have to... Put a little bit of jab of opposite locking just to get it through. But other times it was pretty good. And uh, I mean, through what we say, the main part of, uh, of sweeps here, very good. As, soon as, you, as long as you get that inside wheel just tucked in, there's like little gullies. Very, very subtle, but they're like little gullies. You can get the wheel tucked in and it'll just pull the car around the corner. It was very, very good through there. Not every car reacts very well to that, but uh, down to fourth gear through here. And then we're going to... Keep it in fourth, and I've been toying with the idea of third, and keeping it in fourth seemed to work. It didn't bog down too badly, so off we go again. Now onto the uh, the back end of the run now, Rocky Road, and again that little gully there. You can just see it it's ever so slightly a different contrast to it. And you get your car, in, you get the, the the inside wheel in there. It'll pull you around the corner very well. And through here, this was a tricky corner as well. Sort of at times, like I said, it was a bit understeering. You find yourself drifting off, and I'd have to drop down a gear, but through there. We manage it okay, and this one we're going to run a little bit wide, pretty much on the limit. Getting through there, we're in sixth gear up to 110, 112 miles an hour, and through this final corner, and down towards the finish line, through this last tunnel, and across the line. And it's going to be a time of 7 minutes 36.500. So... Unfortunately, we haven't got the fastest Group B time on the boards, unfortunately. We tried our best. Uh, I think I got as much out of this car as I possibly could. If I could, well, 
I think there's still a couple, of, maybe a second in there. I think there's maybe a second, maybe a little bit more. Because like I said, I was a second down in the middle sector. But we nailed the first in the final sector. So uh, there's a bit more time to find in this car. But as I said, with the nature of this series, I only have two hours of setup work and an hour of timed runs. And this was the best run of the lot. So yeah. And uh, in terms of uh, our Hill Climb Monsters leaderboards, um, it goes into 35th position. So it uh, bumps the, uh, the Renault Maxi Turbo down. But crucially, it's beaten it by not far off. 11 seconds pretty much so uh yeah and uh it's only what it's about a second off the the audi v8 dtm car which was pretty good it was the first car we ran in this series so um it, pretty good like i said it's tricky in certain areas i think there's a little bit maybe more to find in terms of setup if we can find a way to stiffen it up without sort of making it go you know nose upwards going through corners then uh, that'd be better but um yeah like i said it was a fun car to drive uh, a little bit pedestrian compared to what we drove last time out the the c9 sauber uh mercedes uh but yeah there we go guys so uh the audi s1 quattro goes uh onto the last page of our leaderboard and uh 35th position there so um yeah uh that's pretty much the end of today's video guys so um thank you everybody so much for watching uh if you did enjoy this would like to see more uh project cars too or general some racing content from myself make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and when you do subscribe make sure you hit that bell notification so you get updates for when all of my new videos go live and uh, also leave a comment down below guys what is your favorite group b car is it the audi are you more of a peugeot fan is it lancia do you favor more sort of the british fare which was the, you know the ford rs200 and the 6r4 metro uh, or is it something completely different that i haven't mentioned leave a comment down below guys always happy to hear from you uh, but once again guys thank you everybody so much for watching stay cool and as always i will catch you in the next video Peace.